Hey folks, I'm Demotro, here with some nice redwood trees and my whiteboard, where I'm going to show you some reasons how and why the number seven is so much less well-behaved when you're doing simple arithmetic with it than any other single digit number in the base 10 way that our society counts. And it's not just due to the fact that seven is a prime number, which only has factors of one and itself. There are other reasons why every other single digit number is neater to work with and seven is somewhat an outlier. Now, one way that shows up is in fractions, where fractions like one seventh and two sevenths have a much longer repeating string in their decimal than other simple fractions, like one fourth or one fifth or one eighth don't even need to repeat uh, to make a decimal out of them. And something like one third or one sixth only has a single digit repeating forever compared to this, which sevenths have a six digit repeating string. But we're not gonna be talking about dividing right now. We're gonna be looking at how to test if a number is divisible by something like seven or another one digit number, or in other words, how to test whether something is a multiple of a certain one digit number. Now, you might already know some of the simplest divisibility tricks, such as how all whole numbers are divisible by one, and how the even numbers, which are the multiples of two, are going to be even if their last digit is even. We only need to check the last digit of a number to confirm whether it's a multiple of two. Similarly, with multiples of five, if the last digit's a multiple of five, the whole number is. And if it's not, it's not. And twos and fives have that special trait because we count in a base 10 system. And 10's prime factors are two and five. Now, if I had a number with more digits than one, all of the digits to the left of the ones place are referring to an amount of tens. And an amount of tens, regardless of how many tens, is going to be divisible by two and five. So that portion of the number will certainly be referring to something divisible by either of those. We'd only need to check the remaining ones place. And this power actually leaks forward to a degree to the powers of these numbers. For example, two to the second power is four. And if I wanna know if something is a multiple of four or if a number is divisible by four, in other words, I only need to check the last two digits. And that's because anything to the left of that in a number is referring to an amount of hundreds in our base 10 system. 100 would be made up of a pair of twos multiplied by a pair of fives. And so then we're able to go to the next power and know that that portion of the number would automatically be divisible by two squared. And we'd only need to check the tens place and ones place. We could do a similar thing for 25 if I wasn't only focused on the one digit numbers, where to check if something was a multiple of 25, due to that being five squared, we'd only need to check the last two digits. Now with eight, we can even take this one step further. Eight is two cubed. And to know if something's a multiple of eight, you only need to check the last three digits. If the last three digits of a number are divisible by eight, the whole number is for similar reasons where the rest would refer to thousands and thousands are divisible by two cubed times five cubed. Now to check if something is divisible by one of these might get tricky at this point because then how do you know if the three digit number is divisible by eight if it's a large enough three digit number. So the easiest way to go about that would be to split the number in half if you can split something in half once and it is still a whole number, then it's even, but even already had an easy trick. So if you split it in half again and you've now cut the number in half twice and you still have a whole number, the number was divisible by four. And here we could split the three digit ending in half, in half, in half. And if after all that, three times we halved it, we still had a whole number, that would be a multiple of eight and so would the whole thing. 
So not as easy as casting a multiple of two, but still inheriting this sort of easy-ish trait by being a power of two. Now, if I wanna fill in the missing numbers here, we have three, six, and nine. Now, we might think that these are gonna be harder to work with because these don't have these pure factors of 10. Six has one factor in common with 10, but three and nine don't even have any factors in common apart from one. However, three and nine have factors in common with 10 minus one, which is nine. The number that in our base has these special divisibility properties that the number one less than any given base would have. And that means that for multiples of nine, if I add up all the digits in a number and that result is divisible by nine, then so is the whole number. It's a different technique than checking the last amount of digits. You add all the digits, and if you don't know if that's a multiple of nine yet, you can add them again. If you repeatedly add the digits, taking the digital sum until you're at the digital root, which is when you're down to one digit, multiples of nine will always end up on the number nine, and no other types of number will. So here we can do a trick that I'll write with a little plus, meaning if you add the digits, you can know whether it's a multiple of nine by repeatedly adding them downward. But we get that additional trait here as well, because nine is made up of three squared. It's a three times another three. But in the prime factoring of nine, three inherits this trait, where multiples of three that I call three even numbers have the similar trait of if you add their digits, you'll get another three even number. And if you add the digits of a non three even number, your result won't be three even. And you can also continue that process where if you keep adding the digits till you're down to the single digit digital root, if and only if it's a three even digital root, one of these, it's a multiple of three. And if it's the nine, then it's also the multiple of that second three in there and is divisible by nine, what I call doubly three even. Now, as for six, we can just do a combination of three's trick and two's trick because six's prime factorization is two times three. So what we can do is check if the last digit, just the last single ones place digit is even and if the digits add to something three even, and if both of those rules hold and are passed, then the number is a multiple of six. Now, this leaves out seven. If you look up divisibility tricks for seven, there are a few options, but they're all really complicated and practically unuseful. At that point, you might as well find a calculator. One of the divisibility tricks for seven, for example, is to take all the digits in a number, take just the last digit, the ones place, double it, find the difference between that doubled last digit and the remaining number, and see if the difference is divisible by seven, and then iterate that process if you don't know. And the other divisibility tricks for seven are similarly complicated. So why is it that seven didn't get any cool, simple superpowers when all of these other single digit whole numbers did? Well, this relates to the fact that seven has a weird trait out of the single digit numbers. If we count all the numbers from one through 10, including 10, the base number, seven is the only number apart from one that has no factors larger than one, not only in common with any of these, all of these have some factor in common with one of another one or with 10, but seven not only doesn't share with those, but specifically doesn't share them with 10 and nine, whereas every single one of these larger than one, which got a free pass where everything was divisible by it, all of these other ones 
have some factor larger than one in common with either 10 or one less than 10. These ones have a two in common. These ones have a three in common. That also, or no wait, they don't. Uh, well, yeah, so they have a three in common with the nine. Yep. And six has a three in common with the nine and a two in common with the 10. Five has the five in common with the 10. Seven has nothing in common with the base number or one less than the base number. And it turns out that that makes it our outlier where it's much harder to test if a number is divisible by it. And that's one of the reasons why seven's trickier and weirder in our system. But of course, these things wouldn't necessarily apply if we counted in a different base. For example, if we counted in base six, one of the reasons things would be tidier than base 10 is that we wouldn't have a single digit outlier. All of the numbers smaller than six, apart from one, would either have some factor in common with six or be the B minus one number, which would be five in that case. Seven in that case would actually be the B plus one number in base six, but it turns out multiples of B plus one get some fun tricks of their own. Those are the ones we would know as divisibility tricks of the number 11 which I did show once in an episode about palindromic numbers on the main combo class channel. In any case, wanted to just show you folks some reasons why the fact that seven doesn't share any factors with the base or one less than it, while all of these ones do, relate to how you haven't probably learned some simple test for whether something's divisible by seven. Don't go seeking, the tests are not simple and barely worth it. Maybe fun to learn, but maybe we should just switch to base six and make it tidier that way. Thank you for joining me here for a little bonus lesson. I'll be back with more content soon, and I hope you have an awesome day.